Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And that's your boy, mm. Stan Lab. All right, we back again for another week of Love and Marriage Hunts. Yeah, we are. We three. back. Hey. Episode three, Here Comes the Tea Fanny. I told y'all on last week that Tiffany was giving me a vibe. I ain't never usually wrong. I can yeah. read a room very, very well. What? I read the room through the TV. <laughs> I ain't liking her vibe at all, but we're going to go ahead and get into this episode. Let's but do first, it. first, let's go ahead and thank you all for coming back each and every week. Yeah, appreciate you. And if you. you're new appreciate to the you. channel, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Indeed. We appreciate you over here. Make sure that if you aren't subscribed, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If you want to hit the yeah. thumbs down, that's fine too, because everybody gets counted over here. Exactly. But let's get into it. So on... Last, um, not last episode, but episode before that, y'all remember Tisha had the graduation kickback and whatnot. Well, happened to be that Tisha and Mel started working on their relationship and it kind of started by her coming to that graduation party. So Mel decided, okay, we, we're trying to rebuild and we're trying to get back to the old friendship we used to have. Let me go ahead and invite Tisha over and we can just have a little girl chat, you know, chitty chat chat and do whatever. So Tisha comes over, they are doing what they do, having some wine. Tisha brought over their newest product that they're trying to launch and it's called Chocolate in a Bottle with Black. So that was real cute and real fun. So they started talking about relationships and Mel was asking them, you know, asking Tisha, you know, how are you mm -hmm. and Marceau doing? Mm -hmm. And she kind of brought up the fact that during COVID, of course, everybody is in the house stuck together. Yeah. So all of the problems that they had before, as far as them working and being in separate locations, you know, COVID kind of fixed that. Yeah, brought a but, lot of people together. Yeah. It also made people be like, I don't <laughs> yeah. really like you. Yeah. <laughs> but so now that, you know, things are starting to reopen because we outside, mm -hmm. you know, they, they haven't really found that balance between work, family, mm -hmm. romance quiet time with each other so that's what they're right. working on and mel was giving her a little bit of advice saying you know y'all gotta really make sure that you all are going hard for the same goal at yeah. the same intensity because that's what happened with my marriage is we thought we were going towards the same goal but somewhere someone got off track and that's yeah. how stuff can get messed up yeah. and i do like that she told her say you know what why don't you go talk to dr francis, francis. Because he's really, really good. Yeah, I was he like, thank is. you. Yeah, because he is. He dope. is. Yeah, he's real good. And I like what, and I like that Tisha was <laughs> receptive because she was like, you know, I'm not going to say no. I will have to <laughs> convince Marceau to do so. But I do believe that you don't always have to wait until things get bad right. to go for a checkup. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and talk about some things now. But I was like, I thought that was really cute. And big ups to um, Mel. I think Mel looks the most beautiful when she is very toned down like she is such a pretty girl but when she does like when she has minimal makeup on i think she is the absolute best looking ever so let's go ahead and talk about martel martel is over there at his mom's house and he's putting down some snake repellent because every year he said <laughs> there's this one snake that keeps popping up i said how you know it's the same snake martel how you know? It just come out at one one at a time. But he said, you know, either I kill it or I put the repellent down. But I'm going to make sure that every year Ma Dukes is good. She ain't going to have no snake problems. None of look, that. Hey, look, y'all. When <laughs> she said that I had PTSD, <laughs> this was probably about two or three years ago. I was outside. And we still ain't over it. Cutting grass. It was after a big storm. Mm -hmm. Was cutting grass about a week later. And I got my weed in and I was weed eating, trimming everything up. And out of the corner of my eye, I could see something moving. And I was like, my mind said, that's a snake. But the other side of my mind said, they ain't a snake. I turned around and that joker said, and he was like this. He was moving back and forth like this. This sucker was ready to take me out. Yeah, he was. So I called Annette in the house. I was yelling. I was like, baby, baby, come outside. Come outside. Snake out here. She said, no, it ain't no. And I said, there you go right there. She was like, oh my God. So I, said, so I said, you stay right here, and I'm going to the shed and get the limo, and we're going to chop him up. No, he yeah. said, I'm going to go and get the, the shovel. shovel. Yeah, the and shovel. I yeah, said, yeah. No. yeah, Get the limo. Get the limo, because <laughs> if you miss the way he is rose up at you, yeah. he's going to get you. So you're going to have to you're gonna have to mow him down. So I said, you keep your eyes on him while I go back there. So when I got back around the corner, he was getting ready to take off to go up underneath our house. I said, <laughs> <laughs> Ran on top of him, chop, chop his goddamn tail up. But at the same time, in my mind, 
I was like, he still ain't dead. <laughs> <laughs> so Man. I ran over him about two or three times with that got no alarm on. In my mind, I was going to get the gun and I said, no, our neighbors are too freaking close for right. us to be just taking shots at a dead old snake. But we was but, go, well, we had bought some snake repellent stuff. We never put it down. But they also that's said they got black. some Yeah, and they said they got some stuff you can put around the perimeter. But when I was doing my research, they said, they right. said snakes just crawl right across that bush, kid. So, so I'm like, <laughs> So we feel you, my dude, yeah. to the dang old snake. Yeah. So she said, you just make sure. And she said, if you if I see one, I'm going to call you because uh -huh. you need to come over here <laughs> and take care of it. I'm telling you, ain't nothing worse than a snake. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. But Marto gets to telling her, like, you know, I went over to the house and Mel um, shut the door on me. I was like, tell the whole story. <laughs> she shut the door on me. But guess who answered the door and let me in the house? Van. But then she wouldn't let me hug her. She gave me the hand and all of this. So Mon Dukes is like, hold on, what? First of all, <laughs> she need to stay out of it. She got nothing to do with it. She got nothing to do with true. it. Which is true. And and I like what Mon said. She was like, listen, I got my own life to live. Uh -huh. I'm staying in my place, living the I'm life. I'm out of my own business and don't worry about y'all. I said, Mom over there giving me Whitney vibes. I said, like, what you doing over there? But that's wise though. It that, is that wise. That is wise. Stay out of it. Yeah, stay out of other people's marriage unless they invite you in. Yeah, and then it puts you in a, in <clears> their <throat> well, especially Mel's mother. Real talk that does put her in a very uh, vulnerable yeah, spot. Yeah, because. Yeah. Not only that, she is the one that's going to have the children the most. So yeah. it's not that you're in it. You're kind of in it by you default. Fought, you forced in it. And we're going to talk about that when we talk about the meetup that uh, Martel actually had with Van. Right. But I like what Mom said. Like you said, giving wisdom was like, you know, we're going to have to learn to stay out of it. At the end of the day, I still look at Melody as my daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. Y'all done broke up, but... We're just one big split apart family that's going to have to learn how to, to make coexist. This, yeah, make this thing work. And, and do what we need to do. So later on in the episode, we saw that Martel actually did have a meet up with Van in the park. And <clears throat> Van started off with, Martel, I'm not here to attack you. I'm not here to bash you. I'm not here to do any of this. What I want is for peace, closure, and so that we can figure out how to deal with each other for the sake of these children. But she did put in there, she was like, listen, I'm disappointed. I never wanted my grandchildren to grow up yes. in separate, separate households, households from yeah. their parents mm -hmm. because you and Melody already have done that. And I trusted you with my daughter and this is what you did. You mm -hmm. lied over and over and over. And I said, this is where you're we are right, but go wrong with Martel because we expect him to own what he does. And he's not going to own he's it. Gonna, not, he not gonna he's going to own a piece of it. Right. But he's going to find a way to flip that thing around mm -hmm. on you to say that I didn't always lie. At those moments where you asked me, yeah. was I cheating? I was not cheating. You couldn't be cheating at that moment because you were in her presence. Right. <laughs> but maybe 15 minutes before that maybe you were so we're gonna get caught up on logistics here so yeah that's why i say at this point is don't even address him with that yep it's just like the bible say don't cast your pearls before, before the swine because they ain't gonna do nothing but trample over them so yeah. that's him so it's it's no use wasting no energy of telling him anything because in his mind he ain't do all that he know he wrong but not as wrong as we see him. yeah y'all not gonna see him sweat and yeah. i noticed that like even when she talked about the kids and how she never wanted to see her kids grow up in separate households than their parents, you could see that that broke him because his children is his if his is his soft spot. But he don't live in that moment long enough for you to be like, oh, man, he was out there in that park. He was remorseful. He was crying. He not gonna let you see him sweat. Yeah. I kind of had those traits in me too, so <laughs> you're not going to see me sweat. Well, I think a lot of us black people got that trait, you know, because we feel like we have to always show up in the world strong. Because the world makes us strong. Right. So, up, so, show up in the world strong. So to show a sign of vulnerability is, it's is viewed as a weakness. And, and it's, it's really, and it's really not. not because keeping that skit in only is killing us. That's why we got stress and depression and... Mm -hmm. And what else that, you know, we got going on that's killing us before our time, man. Taking yeah. us out here, you know, before our age. I know the average age that people die is 78, but some of us dying at 40 and 50, 30 yeah, in some say, cases. If you, if you make it a 40, you're doing something these days. Yeah, one time we think heart attacks is only for old folks. Nah, they they hitting young people too. Yeah, my best friend's brother. Yep. He died of a massive heart attack at 17 years old. Yep. So, um... 
Let's go over there and talk about Marceau and Jalen. And my dad at 50, in his 50s. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Marceau, Jalen are over there at Black. <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here. And yeah. there's a lot that I feel like is for TV. Because I can't see someone as business savvy as Marceau. Marceau. Yeah. Putting Jalen in a position of, of being a GM knowing that the restaurant business and the hospitality business are the if you don't do that right yeah. you can guarantee your space in the unemployment line quickly yeah. or in bankruptcy because those two right there there's really no margin for error in those two fields yeah so to take Jalen straight from college and put, and him, put him in, in that, that position by with, himself yeah without yeah. being guided yeah i i i I really think that some of this is for TV. Yeah, because he kept <laughs> on saying, y'all, you and Tisha promised to, to back me up and, and give me train on the job training, but I know you got this other project going on, so mm -hmm. I feel like I'm on my own. I was like, nah, ain't no way. Yeah, ain't and no if way. It is and, myself, yeah, ain't, ain't no like, way. Ain't no way. <laughs> but um, especially with with um back to the beginning when when Mel and um Tisha was talking, she was saying that black rest the black uh Lounge was doing real. The lounge was doing really good. So I'm like him not having that experience. I know he he didn't do that by himself. Yes, there's somebody yeah, in somebody there, there is helping. with some experience making yeah. things shake and move. Yeah. But um. So yeah, they're talking about that, and Jalen was saying that pretty much he feels like when things go wrong, he's yeah. the fall guy. Mm -hmm. But when things go right, it's all to the good. But when things go wrong, and he's asking for help. He says that um, Marceau and Tish always promises to give him help or give him guidance and they never do. So he's forced to try to figure it out. And sometimes figuring it out is not figuring it out. It's kind of just putting a patch on it until this goes away until the next time something else comes around. Understand that. But I really love what um, Marceau had to say when he talked about how when a black business opens up, mm -hmm. it's not good enough just to say, I'm um, going to support a black, black business because yep. he said that's going to be real cute for the first couple of months. months. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like he said, you can get wings anywhere. You can yeah. listen to good music and get alcohol anywhere. anywhere. And he said you pay good money for these drinks so you can do that. Yeah, anywhere. he said when the prices when he said when uh, the nude is way off and they see what these what they really cost. I, and I know what he's talking about because we have a lounge right here in Richmond. And I was like, yeah, mm -mm, I can't do this yeah. all the time. Um, but, but what he did say was, we need to make sure that every time we are hitting the black experience, yeah. because that's what's going to keep people coming back, no, regardless of the price, yeah, regardless of a little hiccup here and there. If you give them that experience, they will continue to come back again and again. And I love what he said, because we were talking about this um, probably sometime this week, as far as like YouTube goes. And we talk about people that come through the channels. It was like, why do people come to reviews to listen to the regurgitated facts and truths and opinions of a show that they just watched? It's the experience yeah. of whoever it is that you're looking at. It's the value. It's, yeah. Yeah. There are some people that love us that can't stand another re reviewer. Right. There are some people that love other reviewers <laughs> that can't stand us. That's how life is. It's the experience that you get wherever you feel comfortable at. Right. And that's the value yeah. added. So you because get, we're not doing anything unique here. So you get the Lynette and Stanley experience. experience when you come over here. Yeah. 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 We're not giving you anything that you have it. Well, if you don't have cable. Well, well they don't have us at their house, so they can get us. So digital. that's yeah. the experience. Right, right. Right. So that's where people will be like, so y'all talking about a show that everybody just watched? Yeah. Yeah. But, but why do the people do it? Because of the experience that they get over here. But, what is our experience? But back, Stories. But back to back to Jalen, y'all. Um, I don't know if Jalen watches, but if you is watching, brother. You I, are. I, I, I feel your pain with Marcel always telling you what you're doing wrong. Let me tell you something, brother. Welcome to leadership. Yeah. I thought you were leaders, ready to go somewhere with nah, that. Because leaders, I don't care. Leaders, when you are the leader of whatever, if something go wrong, it's always your fault. It's going to be your fault. But here's the good thing. I think what Marte, what uh, Marceau is really trying to teach him is because we want to instantly be successful, but success comes through failure. And you fail okay. your way to success because your failures is what is where you learn. So I think that's what Marceau was trying to tell him. So they basically dropped him off in the water and say, "Now swim." 
yeah. and fail your way to success. But I still, but like we said, he ain't doing it by himself. But Can't but be. he's still going through his failures as a leader, so he can be a better leader. Yeah, but one day we plan to um take a trip and go to um Huntsville. Matter of fact, Marcel, y'all need to send us a bottle of that chocolate chocolate champagne, man. Yeah, so we can do an honest review on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. go on, send us go on, send us a bottle. I don't know if that's legal. I don't know if you can actually, because we're in Virginia. Things well, you can legal. order wine online. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. you can order wine online. I don't now, know. That, I don't know if that requires some special license. Hell, we can or order weed online. Whatever, or whatever but hey, you we know. can order weed online now. <laughs> right. Just, so just take the wine and throw it at the bottom of a big box and put a whole bunch of newspaper <laughs> over it, a whole bunch of plastic bags and, and some pack of peanuts and go ship it to them. They don't know what no. it is. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about this, her, um, this girl Tiffany and her husband Lewis. Cute family. Yes. I really like. Here's the thing. It's kind of like. <clears throat> it's kind of how. I, never mind. I'm not going to go there. Because um, I was going to say something really disrespectful. But I'm not. Um, Tiffany and Lou. They have boys. And the boys get along good. And they're really close in age. Where they can kind of bond. And grow up as brothers and whatnot. And they are speaking about, you know, how they got together. Both of them have experienced breakup, divorce, got together, and they're making the best of this newfound love that they have. That's all well to the good. So Tiffany tells Lou, said, listen, Melody invited me to Destiny's birthday brunch, and I'm going <laughs> to go over there, and I said, uh-huh. Say, say, use it, yeah, yeah, use it, yeah. Now... We get over there. No, we're not going to talk about it because we're going to talk about it last. But let's go ahead and talk about this because that went way over my head on the last episodes. Did Tiffany really surprise her husband with the wedding? Like I told, like she told him to show up. We get married. I told, I told, I told. My I gotta queen, read into this. I told my queen to, to each his own. It really is to each his own, each his but own I have my day. opinion about it. Right. I, I mean, I did. I used to have an opinion about stuff like that. <laughs> but as, I don't care. Well. But we all be like, I want people to mind their own business and let me do me. But at the same time, we don't extend the courtesy to everybody else and let them do them. I get paid so, good money for my opinion. So here's the thing. <laughs> if we, if I had decided to do a ball diamond wedding for you to surprise you to marry me, I don't want nobody else to, to be like, no. That's socially acceptable. But <laughs> since socially it's the reverse acceptable. around since she did it, that's where the problem at. Uh -huh. But who made the rules? We're not going to go here. There. That, that, We're that's not going to go here. That's the way I think. It's like, like I guess this I guess, like, I guess because I'm getting older. And you don't care. And, we don't care. And like, where's the rules at? Who said that the man has to ask the woman? To get we're married. not why going to why this. can't the woman ask the man? Now, no, now, we're not. Yeah, but, no. but but that's what society has done to us to make us think that's the way it's supposed to be done. But I know y'all gonna argue in the comments like Stanley, what the hell you talk about? The man is supposed to be to the woman and da da da. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I believe. I believe that's the way it's to be done. You should have went but, to church this morning. But I'm not gonna skit on somebody else if they decide to do it back. That's them. I mean, they don't pay none of my bills. They don't affect they they. I, yeah, they don't affect my life in any kind of way doing that way. I'm good. I mean, you know I'm right about it. No, I don't. But as for me, and I'm going to ask my lady to marry me. That's me. That's, that's you know, that's what I believe. Because of the rules. But I can't, I can't project and put my beliefs on somebody else. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Tisha. <laughs> Tisha and them are going to um, Houston. Because they have been invited to host, like, what is it, Cigar Week? Some Cigar Week, Or something yeah. like that. So while they're in Houston, they're <laughs> actually looking to open a second location for black. That's how I know that some of this has to be made for TV. Because if the bugs are not ironed out over there at establishment number one, how are we expanding with yeah, establishment number two? Because what history repeats itself from building to building. So I'm like, this has to be for TV. <laughs> but she had to go out there a day earlier than Marcel because he had to stay behind and do some business. But the business that she really wants to get, she want her back broke out. But at first she wanted the strawberry and the wine. She wanted and all the romance, that stuff. romance she before want, that, though. Yeah, yeah, she wanted the prelude because 
they haven't been getting that. They don't have no kids around. They got this nice hotel room. It's time to get it on, crack a lack it. She Mess said, Mom, so I want you up. to preheat my oven. Yes. She said, yeah. we, can, we can break they skit up and leave and pay the $200. It'll be worth it to my soul. So <laughs> she calls Mars Toe and tells him that. And he was like, if you just want to have sex, we can just well, yeah, do we it. We can bypass all that we skit over there we don't and have, save some money. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to have the honor. Uh -huh. We don't have to have none of that. We can just go straight into sex. I was like, Mars Toe. Such a dude. <laughs> um, and she was like, no, Marcel, we're, we're definitely going to get our romance on while we're out here in Houston. And I ain't mad at you, um, Tisha, for that. But, Go ahead. But let me say something about the romance piece. Like, I used to be that guy, you know, when I was younger. I'm, I acting, like, I'm, like, I'm acting like I'm real old. You know, when you're younger, all you think about is, you know, getting in the hole. I mean, you don't care nothing about no romance or all that skit. But man, that, I, I'm starting to like romance a little bit more better than that. I mean, that's like the icing on the cake. Uh, so the romance leading up to it is the icing on the cake. Yeah, because that makes things happen, man. Yeah. Yeah. Sex with most women are mental. It's mental. Oh, yeah. 90% mental. So, anywho, then, let's go ahead and get into this birthday brunch. I like Destiny's group of friends because it reminds me of my group of friends. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you got hood. <laughs> you have psychologists. Classy. <laughs> you got you got some that you dare not ask how they make their money. Oh, oh, your shirt speaks perfect. You know, you have them friends that's kind of classy and kind of hood. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have friends that I wouldn't have. They don't work nowhere, but their bills are always paid. And I ain't asking because that's not my business. That's right. Um, Just like if a woman decided to ask a oh man to marry her, it's not your no. business. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> we so selective, man. <laughs> we so selective. I'm going to be selective till we I are. die. We are. That's okay. And the Lord going to say, well done. <laughs> <laughs> my good and faithful servant. Because you kind of classy and, and you kind of hood. God is too. <laughs> yeah, he is. God, I believe. God in the Bible would just say, Oh, you ain't follow my rules. Oh, you ain't. Oh, oh you decided. Oh, you decided to keep that bull back at home and don't bring it to be burnt in the burnt offering. You know what? Boom, your whole family gone. Your whole family gone. <laughs> oh, your wife want to look back? Uh huh. You turn her, turn her into sea salt. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> we act like God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so the the group of friends started showing up to the birthday brunch, right? So they're all getting together and Kimmy happened to be like one of the later ones to show up. But when she shows up, she walks dead center into the end of a conversation of Destiny confirming the fact that she is now divorced. So Kimmy was like, I don't like what I just feel like I walked in on. So I'm going to leave and I'm come leave back. I'm going to leave and come back. <laughs> and they was like, no, 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 Kimmy, sit down. It happened. We are officially divorced. And Kimmy is legitimately shocked. Yeah. Like, she was like, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. I need to process this. What? Yeah. You have a newborn baby. Like, mm -hmm. I hate to see a dissolve of a family. Like that, That's me, yeah. It's... And and Destiny was like, and you could tell <clears throat> that in this moment, she was really trying to process it without mm -hmm. breaking. Breaking down, Because yeah. she had mentioned to Melody that she had a really hard day the day before. And then Melody was like, Wait a minute. You mean to tell me you had a hard day before this day, but you didn't pick up the phone and call me? Melody, what I told you on episode one, you can't get mad at your friends for being you in a you situation or you in a them situation. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you did the exact same thing when you were going through your thing with Martel, like season one. Your friends were telling you, like, you should have picked up the phone and called me and told me. No, I just no. want to go through it myself. Yeah, so... Uh -huh. She's processing it the way that she feels like she needs to process it. <sighs> Let's go ahead and talk about this guy doing Tiffany. So because Tiffany is the addition to the birthday brunch who shouldn't, this is definitely for TV because you just don't invite randoms to somebody's birthday. What you talking Nothing. about? Nothing. Black people do that all the time. <laughs> this ain't no TV. That's reality. Yeah, I, I would stay corrected on that one. You be you be at your family cookout and you be like, "Is that?" Well, you don't ask questions at the family cookout no, because you you don't ask them. Things. You just see it in your mind. Who no, is that? because we have those family members at every event. They have a different person with them, so yeah. we dare not to ask, and we don't even get to know their names because we know they by know the next yeah, yeah, you gonna be rotated by the yeah. next event. <laughs> yeah, and if we see you a second time, we could be like, "Oh, okay, what's your name?" 
<laughs> I did see you. Oh, okay. Tiffany, that is. Nice nails. Mm -hmm. So, Tiffany, they're working the room and trying to figure out how do they know this one and this one and what events did this one. So, long story short, Tiffany is connected with Kimmy on a level of <clears throat> their children playing sports together. Yeah. So, they get to talking about this, that, and the third. And then Tiffany just breaks out with the... Oh yeah, your your monster was the one that was in the bathroom vaping, right? So, oh, so man, that was that was like so out of place. So so Kimmy was like, <laughs> wait, what? So I like how Kimmy said it. She was like, you know what? That's a that's a Maurice conversation. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then in confessional, she was like, okay, not only are you is you telling this little boy's business, mm -hmm. you're telling it in a very open and adult setting. Yeah, putting kids' business out there in the street. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm like, okay, so that's strike But well, they kind of go back to like what the show is like deciphering what's scripted and what's not because it was like so out of place. They they weren't even on that and then just out the blue. Oh, he was vaping in the, in the bathroom? Yeah, he was vaping in the bathroom. I was like, wow. Like, what? All right. So then we get around <clears throat> to how Tiffany possibly knows Destiny and how they have crossed paths before. Yeah, this so was evidently, right Mel and Marta, <laughs> when they were together, had an event over at their house, and all of them just happened to meet and you know, you know, bump shoulders. So they're familiar with the faces of each other. So then Tiffany goes on to tell this story about, yeah, I remember there was an event where your husband was being presented with an award. <clears throat> And it was like, yeah, it was like best entrepreneur of the year, something like that. And she was like, yeah. And then when I saw you the next day over at the thing, I was like, yeah, that outfit that you had on yesterday was really nice. And you were like, oh, that wasn't me. And Destiny gets really upset and have to leave. And everybody was like, oh. And Destiny in her confessional was like, one, you weren't even invited. Then you come here on my birthday to say something mm -hmm. stupid out of your mouth like that, that's going to upset me. <clears throat> like for real, for real. Like, first of all, if that did happen, don't you think that's very embarrassing for Destiny? And then you're gonna bring that up in her friendship circle. Yeah. And throw that out there on Front Street. At a positive event. <clears throat> and birthday then party. when Destiny runs off to the bathroom, she's gonna say, well, it's her birthday party. I guess she can cry if she wants to. Mm -hmm. No, you can get your A whooped if she wants to do that. Because that was so uncalled for. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. I was like, see, I tried to. <clears throat> and I hope this is made for TV. But at the same time, you got to realize that if you're making good TV, you got to walk out in this real world with that same integrity when you are doing a reality show yeah this ain't script well <laughs> yeah it's, 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 we don't never mind yeah. i know what you're saying yeah i know what you're saying but yeah i was like i was just done yeah i was blown i was like yeah that's like we like you having a birthday party for me and my cousin come in there and bring up my my ex-wife if i had one mm -hmm. and how we broke up at my birthday party in front of everybody so and it just happened. It wasn't that long ago. I don't care if it was <clears throat> a long time ago. Why are you bringing that up over here? Yeah. At all. I don't know, y'all. But y'all <laughs> let us know how y'all like this episode. It wasn't yeah. much to the episode. They pretty much left the bulk of it for the oh, end. yeah. What's that? Maso and Tish, we have a really nice cigar lounge here in Richmond that we go to every now and then. But I would love for y'all to bring a black lounge here. Think about that, man. Do you demographic? I don't know too much about the demographic Richmond. I just know there's a lot of black folk here with good that, money that hang out a lot. And if y'all if y'all need me, to, cause we get, I think we going either Friday, yeah, Friday or Saturday of next week, and we'll show we'll shoot some videos. And, and you want if you want the videos to see Come how how, how packed you, you know how packed this club is because we hang out there. Yep, and it's nice, real nice. But we could use another one. Yeah, that's black on. Yeah. Because this one ain't nah. straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla! Holla.